Hello, I'm Matt, and welcome back to Southern RPG. Today, I'm going to be talking about Metaphor Refantasio, and I've been having an absolute blast with this game. Now, I finally completed it, so I thought I can give my full thoughts on the entire game as a whole, because it's been the best time I've had in an RPG in a bloody long time, to be perfectly honest. And with all the bullshit with Dragon Age, Velgard, and some of the other RPG AAA drops that have dropped recently, it was really like a massive breath of fresh air for the story to be as good as it was. There was a few little caveats to that and a few little bugbears that I have, but we'll go through that as we're going through the video. So this is going to be my completely honest review on the entire thing. So let's start with the story. Now the story itself was like, for me, it was brilliant. Like the overarching story was really good. There was a lot of things that happened. Now I will pre-warn you, there will be spoilers in this. Like there's going to be spoilers. I don't know how far I'll go the spoilers but if you don't want any spoilers for metaphor then just uh, this is definitely something that you don't want to be listening to because it's going to be going over the entire game itself i forgot to add that in at the beginning but like i don't write scripts in my videos i just talk as i'm deciding what i'm going to be talking about so the story itself you're starting off as a little like just a just a young dude who falls off a carriage and ends up in the city and part of some big massive plot and you basically go through the game meeting people and you you get the main overarching quests of basically saving the prince now as time goes on the prince of the country was actually like uh, poisoned with a spell. It was kind of like a curse where you have fawns going around his body, etc, etc. And he has not that long time to live. So like the, in this game, there's a lot of time frames that you can do stuff. And it, it's kind of the same as a lot of these type of games. If you're looking at, say, for instance, Persona, or you're looking at Fire Emblem, especially Free Houses, it's going to be very familiar to you with the, uh, like, the amount of time that you have before you can do stuff. Now, this was made by the developers of Persona. That's why it's going to be a lot of similar to persona i haven't played that many personas and i haven't played persona 5 royale i'm gonna check it out soon but i want to check out valkyria chronicles 4 first because i've missed a lot of jrpgs over time but like that's something we'll talk about later if it's something you'd like to see make some content on those older games let me know down below but anyway you go through and you start to meet up with some people as you're going along when you meet up with these people you unlock things called archetypes now these archetypes are basically your classes and any character can be any archetype now this is one of the things that i have a little bit of a caveat with with a lot of these games the character Characters that you do meet up with, the the your and your followers, your companions, they always kind of have a set stat route. So they're only really good at certain things. Now there's enough characters in this game for if you want to play magic, if you want to play luck, if you want to play agility, if you want to play uh, strength, or you're going to be using physical or melee weapons. There are enough characters. But the thing that I had a bit of an issue with when going through it was the mage characters were kind of way further down the line. Now uh, it took me 60 hours to complete the game fully and that's without a new game plus that's just completing the game all the way through and getting all of the map unlocked unlocking all of the that included a lot of grinding and farming to get all of the archetypes fully maxed out and leveled up but a lot of things that you get within the game come a lot later especially if you want to play a sign of mage thing like you can't really get stroll which is one of the npcs the first one you get and make him a mage i mean you can because you can give him items that will give him stats and maxing out all of those archetypes will actually give you enough stats for him to have a high enough magic thing i did actually try it you can actually do that a lot of people in these games min max to the extreme where you don't really need to min max that much you can if you want to make stroll a mage you can if you want to make Heisen hulkenberg heisenberg hulkenberg a mage you can do that there are enough items in the game to get your magics that high enough for you to do decent amount of damage with any of the characters that you want to do and you can build it in any way that you want now if you want to have it to the point of like god mode 99999 hits and stuff like that then it's not something you can actually do but there is room for you to play an easier game you don't have to play on the hardest difficulty like um i play on normal usually just because i, I play rpgs for the storyline and not for like the extendedly long strategic battles with buffs and debuffs etc like that's just not really my cup of tea massively although i do do it when i'm doing a completionist run usually in a new game plus in these type of games that's when i'll start playing it that way but for me i play through the story first get the story out of the way then i can piss about a new game plus afterwards and this there's i have a few issues with a new game plus in this game which we'll talk about later on in a thing but we're getting through to the i'm going off onto a different tangent so we got the story where you get to meet the characters and then you go after the main guy Luis. now the main guy Luis is actually pretty well written there are some parts of the story where it's kind of blatant what's going to happen especially after the first death scare where you just like oh shit you killed the main guy so who's the best oh it's the it's the sanctifex oh, oh wait the sanctifex is dead oh my god lewis is back and then it was just like back and forth for about 
10 hours of him dying and then coming to life and dying and coming to life. Now, it's not the worst in the world. I've seen much worse games storyline, Dragon Age Valgard. You are a bitch. But it was still kind of became predictable that it was going to go back and forth and Luis was still going to be the main boss at the end. So that kind of like took away some of the uh, shock value to him being alive and dead and alive and dead and alive and dead over and over again. And uh, But it's pretty standard fare in JRPGs where the main boss, even when you go to the end and you think you've won, he's going to fight him again. He's not going to give up and you're going to fight him again. That's pretty standard to have different like difficulties and levels of the boss at the end of a fight like that's just standard fare of most jrpgs final fantasy has been doing that shit for years even with sephiroth when you're fighting him in three different stages at the end of final fantasy 7 for example there's a lot of that actually going on in this game and i can't say that as bad but it is a bit like oof, okay that's enough now we know he's going to be alive we know he's going to be the bad guy so let's just get on with that bit it did get that a little bit towards the end because it was a good few hours that i was jumping from the opera house until the end game where he was going backwards and forwards and we're after chasing him off now the issue the kind of little bit of an issue and it's not a big issue like i enjoyed the game through and through i had the blast i had the best time that i've had an rpg as i said at the beginning in a long time but when there is the like the amount the way that they've done the amount of time in between doing the quest to make sure that you can have enough time to get stuff like maxed out etc it did kind of feel like they forced him to be able to get away so you can have that time to do it so if we're using Luis as the example here where like towards the end of the game you're given 30 days um to finish the end bit but he he's like destroying the world and then you're given like 10 days to get the last of what you need or ten, four or five days maybe a month four or five days but you get those days to get to before he destroys the world and you need to they use the excuse in the game that the magla is too powerful in that area so you can't really go through it until you get to the last day so there's that there's that excuse well not really excuse but there is that there now the issue that i had with that it just kind of felt a little bit forced but still i did really enjoy the story i did watch all of the cinematics i didn't skip stuff i didn't go like skip any of the conversations and stuff but yeah at the end it's kind of like a sephiroth finale where you fight the guy with wings who's distorted it's basically the magla is human anxiety which i found really interesting the, the stories that they have behind the entire thing of like uh, anxiety powering the magic and it, it's given from the people's anxiety so the more anxiety you have the more likely you're going to have it, it kind of hit some levels of dealing with some of the four mental difficulties in life it was it was actually really good and it did feel like they were kind of taking the piss out of western culture a little bit like uh in general like humans in general just with the fact that the the main monsters in the game are called humans and they're they're distorted and it, it it's for me it just felt like they were actually taking the piss out of how shit the west is with this whole argument of back and forth between the two different sides of uh dei and not dei woke and not woke culture it kind of felt like they they did the story to take the piss out of that it was kind of funny i liked it and it was a little bit here and there during the story which made that kind of more noticeable but at the end you end up being like uh i'm not gonna actually yeah no you know what screw it i will i've already given the spoiler warning you become you you, you you're trying to get the crown for the prince turns out that you are a mental uh magla separated person that as of, of the prince basically so like you are the prince so when the prince actually croaks it later on he gets assassinated you actually meld, meld back with him and your hair color changes just like it does in free houses uh, fire ember and flea houses when that pops up you have a hair color change when you finally realize who you are and that's kind of like standard fare in these games as well and then you just do the last bit to go and fight Luis to become king and i did like the little bit of the ending there where they turned around and said like they give it a year in the future and it wasn't a massively happy ending yes it was happier than usual but they, they were still working on it there wasn't like a year later and you have the perfect utopia kingdom i kind of felt like they were leaving room for dlcs or the second part of the game where you just go around and like helping doing stuff with the kingdom maybe that'll be something that they add later on which i kind of find would be interesting because i love kingdom building stuff now with these type of games there's a lot of collecting there's a lot of running around there's a lot of gathering stuff there's a lot of doing little side bits to get your mp up to get your hp up to get all of these things up um and the the king's virtues now the king's virtues there's five of them i believe five yeah there's five of the king's virtues and you have to level them up to unlock certain dialogue options now i thought there'd be like a lot more to do with that because it does take a decent amount of your free time away doing that but it was just to unlock the next talking point of certain 
companions or certain allies that you have within the game because not everyone you talk to is going to be a companion there's some of them do unlock the archetypes for you as you go through the like the conversational chain from one to eight but not all of them are going to be able to fight for you they just unlock the, some of the archetypes that you do have so i will i thought there would be a lot more done with that because the king's virtues system was actually it could have been really good for you to like at the end if you didn't have everything unlocked, you wouldn't have been able to do the final speech, etc. I think that would have been pretty cool where you'd only have to have certain options and that kind of helped to what ending that you were going to have. And there are multiple endings. So that's the basic gist of the story itself. I did really enjoy it. I did really enjoy the side quest. I did really love the part with the uh, the mother who's taken over Mar. I can't remember the name of the town, Margria, where she takes over the town and like uh, well, she's the leader of the town basically. And she goes in and she her baby has been killed because of some prejudice stuff. There's a lot of prejudice, politics, and religion, and I don't understand how a lot of Western developers don't understand that we do fucking love politics and religion and all that kind of shit in our games. And like they're just shocked when you see that these Eastern games from Japan, Korea, and China are doing so much better because they're adding all of this depth from the politics and stuff they don't give a shit who they're upsetting and how the western developers are like well we, we just want to not put it's like going into a discord of someone really popular and they don't allow political conversations because someone might get upset for example that's kind of some bullshit to me but it is what it is they can do what they want and there's a hell of a lot of that within the game so let's go on we've been talking a lot about the storyline let's talk about the combat now the combat was pretty standard fare of the old school format now there's a lot you can do with it that you can mix and match with the arch type archetypes you can i mean if you're gonna just run through the game itself and you can just run through as like a bunch of tycoons one of the archetypes and a i don't know a knight or you can you can unlock high a little later on in the game and he can become a really really good like uh like a dodge tank and you can get him to reflect magic back so he's like he's always being targeted if, especially if you're mixing and matching some of the knights archetype abilities so that he he will get them to attack him at all times and he just dodges and reflects back magic it becomes super easy and then you can use the tycoons to use their them their gill, att gill attack their money attack cash attack i forgot what the name of the cash is in the game though i said gill because i was still thinking about final fantasy but it's turn based and there's different ways you can actually add turns to your go so if you hit a weakness you get another half turn if you hit uh if you use some abilities like heroes cry later on with the prince now i was a little bit unhappy with some of the on how long it took to unlock some of the archetypes um especially when it comes to new game plus later on but it took too long to get some of the archetypes to really piss about with a lot that's going on within the game like you can you do pretty the, the way the game is made you kind of have to to get the maximum amount if you do want to min max you kind of have to stack the same classes together so it's like monotype groups, which isn't a lot of fun. You don't need it. You can go down to normal mode and easier mode and just run whatever you like. But for instance, with the magic, to get the most out of the magic and do some decent amount of damage and get those unscathed victories, you do have to kind of run several mages. Now, I'm just saying mages as the general term, not the mage actual archetype. Archetype. I don't know why I say archetype. English. Bullshit. So there is that there. But if you're using physical or melee, you can pretty much just use anyone you want in a group and just main tank, main, like, main your main character as the damage dealer and you can just fit around what you want with that because they're they're really powerful and there is there's some passives in the game where you can put your hp down to one and you do 100 percent extra damage and you double your crits and stuff with the tycoon and the, the there's a lot of options that you can do so there's a lot of variability and unless you are completely min maxi you can piss about with a lot of different things and i really do like that about this game let's talk about the companions themselves the companions actually had pretty well writ stories now you have stole hulkenberg there's a character you have at the beginning grius but he gets offed pretty early in the game it's just kind of like uh to give you the player the uh the the idea that the urgency and the reason why you're fighting is because of this moment you have Heisme who runs a pretty good thief along other things you can run him as a gunner type you got juno which is kind of like a dancer singer and her thing is to change up her masks and the mask dancer archetype which is going to be her main archetype so they all have a set archetype really that they're going to be using because their royal archetypes which are the end game archetypes are based around those original ones so you can do other things but they they push you in a certain direction which is something that i didn't really like that much i like some variability i like to be able to put what i want into my characters etc i think final fantasy does this a lot better in their older games where they were 
actually allowing you to make the character as you wish even though some characters were pushed into mage roles some were pushed into physical roles you can still make them be pretty viable in other areas and there's no difference with this game at all they can actually do that you got basilio which is going to be your berserker your big axe wielding dude and you don't get some of these characters till right towards like the mid to late game and by mid to late game i mean like literally right at the cusp of late game some of these guys come along and where you can actually start grinding it out and you do have to spend quite a significant amount of time grinding out the archetype xp to be able to get those later characters to get their maxed out archetypes like the whole entire tree so you do have to do a lot of grinding if you want to do that which is normal standard is standard fair i'm not saying it's the worst in the world but there is that and i did love heisme as a character was absolutely really amazing and the english voice actor was actually pretty damn good i wasn't a big fan of juna yufa was a, actually quite like yufa as the kind of naive character that was in there to that's been shut off in an island and wasn't able to know what's really happening in the outside world and she's learning and she's going along i did like basilio family loss tries to get back on top of the world by being the up chipper person you got stole which is actually one of my favorite ones to be honest because i like the reserved melee type characters like they, they they're not like until he gets to later game when he starts giving some speeches he's kind of like just the stoic guy which i kind of really like him and the story that comes behind him Hulkenberg is actually a pretty decent character, but I don't like the full knightly thing that she has going on. It's not something that I enjoyed too much through the whole thing. She's just like an honor bound person. And June is just upset. Her story is about literally another singer trying to up one just to, to get above her and it, she gets poisoned. And she, the only th there's one thing you can't really play an evil character in this, but the evil characters, the, the enemies, like the main bosses and stuff, they're done well enough that you don't need to. You are a good party. You're fighting for the good side of things. So you don't really have an evil route that you'd normally have in Western RPGs, which again, because they've done the, uh, the, best, the bosses and the bad guys so well, there wasn't really an issue for me with that at all in the slightest i know what i was playing here i was playing a jrpg so let's talk about the new game plus which is my biggest the only thing that i don't like about this game now new game plus for me it should be for you to go in after you've done all of the leveling after you've grind out everything you've got all the archetypes and stuff like that and then you go into new game plus and you just kick the shit out of it that's what i think a new game plus should be but there's so many balancing things that are done in a new game plus you don't carry over your character levels you don't carry over um a lot of your uh like when you know when you go into the the runner when you go into the runner and you're doing the HP, MP and your stat boosting stuff that permanently boosts your stats during the game, that doesn't carry over. So none of that stuff carries over. And it kind of like you have to grind again in a new game plus to get what you need to do. Now you do get your items which make one shot in everything pretty damn easy at the beginning of the game and you, as you're going through it becomes a lot easier. And all of your archetypes that you have unlocked and you have leveled up do carry over however you have to do all of the eight levels of each companion to speak to them again which can be easier done because you don't have to do the king's virtues but it's still kind of a bit much i want to go i wanted to kind of go in and just piss about with it and run through the game as the prince for example but if i understand why they didn't do it because it does mess with the story a little bit because you can't like have the prince the whole game and then suddenly unlock the prince later on the prince archetype for example but it would have been nice to have a way of just pissing about and really exploring the entire game and different builds and stuff as a group going through from the beginning to the end rather than unlocking most of the archetypes right towards the mid to late game mid late game that was just one of the things that i didn't like and there should have been a lot more involved in that there's just one boss fight that you get extra which is an extra boss fight but then you have to kind of run around and you still have to wait for all of your archetypes to unlock like a new game plus isn't really about balancing it's just about taking the piss at the end of the day because you've already completed the game you just want to run through and you're seeing and you want to test stuff out that that's what i think new game plus should be the way that free houses fire emblem did that where they allowed you they gave you points each time you completed the game and when you complete the game and go to new game plus you can unlock a lot of things to skip a lot of the stuff but the game was built with the new game plus in mind at least in my opinion because the way that it's done it doesn't affect the story it doesn't affect anything that really goes along you can just unlock them as you're going and it, 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 they did that really well but yeah all in all i really had a really good time with it i'm already going through new game plus right now i'm I, as i said it's kind of annoying that i have to wait to unlock stuff but i'm still going through it i'm enjoying it still and i want to be checking out some more of the jrpgs that i missed so let me
Let me know down below if there's something you'd like to see. Let me know what you thought of Metaphor down below. Let me know what you thought of the game, the story, the, the gameplay, the fighting, the mechanics, the archetypes, everything. Let me know what your opinion is on it. And do you think it's one of the game of the year for RPGs? Because I think it's up there with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but, uh, Wukong, which kind of is, it's an action RPG. So, I mean, it's going to be up there. That's probably going to be game of the year, to be honest, if they allow it because of uh, they tried to block a lot of the stuff over here because it was made in China and then everyone loved it. So they kind of released it anyway. So it was kind of like a difficult one. But anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. Like and sub for all your gaming goodness. Fly safe and avoid local chess games.